Yo, what is up guys? It's your boy Jovan, Coach Jovan, whatever host, whatever you want to call me. I'm back at it again with another episode of Weight Room Overtime, right? So, um, I'm excited for this one. This one should be, you know, my bread and butter, kind of what I've been doing all my life. And, and as far as like coaching and training athletes and being an athlete, um, kind of understand this whole field pretty well. Um, and able to kind of portray a message to young athletes and hopefully anybody that you know can take something out of this video or out of the you know kind of message I'm saying out there for you know either whether you're a coach whether you're a player whether you're a trainer whatever you may be um, I think you'll find some value out of this video so thank you guys for tuning in um, hopefully you guys are enjoying the content and the topics that I'm bringing up I know they're a little bit not I guess random a little bit too. They're not like consistent into a specific thing. Like I did a postpartum one and I did a, you know, a different training one as well. Um, but today is going to be, you know, how do you prepare a soccer player for, you know, competition or I guess season, right? So a couple of things that go into soccer athletic development, um, right off the bat, I think it's really understanding the player's age, uh, chronolo chronological age, sorry. Um, which is how old they are and how old they've been playing the sport. And then as well as, you know, how much time you have to prepare an athlete too is something you have to kind of look at. So for example, let's say you're in high school, right? And I think it's high school season, depending on what state you're in, um, a lot of times during the springtime. So ideally you're pretty close to starting your season off, right? Um, so you, you kind of have to understand how far out you are to be able to plan out your training program, which I think is the first number thing important and then figure out the needs analysis for the specific sport. Um, and what is a need, needs analysis, right? That is essentially um, necessarily a player, if you're a player, is more of the, from the coaching side, understanding, you know, the prime movers of the specific sport. So if there's specific movements in soccer, you know, what, what, what are those? What energy systems that may require, you know, hey, is there backpedaling, sprinting forward, lateral, jumping, you know? sliding there's a lot of movements that happen and how do we make a proficient athlete or how do we prepare that athlete to be able to move in you know all directions not just linear speed right um and the reason i bring that up is you get that a lot you especially in high school you see it a lot where you have just fast sprinters fast athletes that could just you know they'll put them on the wing and all they can do is fly right but there's technical abilities to maybe cut or maybe you know, dribble or sprint with the ball, it's not all there, right? So you kind of get the idea. So my whole goal today is just kind of educate you guys a little bit in regards to, you know, what goes into a whole preparation of a soccer player, right? So first thing to consider, and I think this is the most important, is understanding the energy systems that are involved in the sport of soccer. And that's gonna be your anaerobic and aerobic, you know, energy systems, right? So what does that mean? That means there's gonna be sprints and there's long distance running, right? So what I mean by that is, so you're gonna have a lot of, about every 30 seconds, you're either gonna be sprinting, you're either gonna be jogging, you're either gonna be jumping, you're gonna be moving laterally, defending. So there's constant movement, right? So there's a bunch of different, you know, avenues of energy systems that revolve around the, uh, the sport of soccer. But most importantly, you need to understand the position that you're playing, right? Because each position might be different. Um, and then the reason I bring this up, because the midfielder is gonna be different than a defender and a forward, right? As far as the energy system, so what I'm talking about there is a forward, not, it's not necessarily going to be sprinting back and forth all the time like a midfielder is. They're going to be more of the sprinting, hey, I'm going to conserve my energy here because I want to be able to, you know, do a 30, 40 yard dash or maybe a 20 yard dash, you know, and shoot or whatever it may be, it, right? So that, that's kind of what I'm getting at. So you have to understand the position that you're playing. And if you play multiple positions, maybe a forward and a midfielder, hey, you might as well train as a midfielder because you're going to have the the cardio to be able to last 90 minutes or however much time you play right so that's kind of the the, the importance there and at, at that part but um, let's take a look at a little bit of you know the initial start of a program right so hey young soccer players if I knew this when I was younger I'd probably be 10 times better than I was hopefully right I, I, I think understanding you know the science behind exercise and how to actually prepare you for competition or season is it's important right and this is something you don't really get taught unless your parents are you know paying for a trainer or you're playing at a high-end club or something like that where they have actual trainers or strength and conditioning coaches right so i'm giving this information to you for free because hopefully you're able to um you know put that into your own training programs whether you're a young athlete whether you're you know middle age or, or maybe you're in high school or trying to play in college 
I did it, you name it, right? Or even if you're trying to pray pro a little bit, right? So the first thing I want to do is um, before, let's say you're going to start in the fall, right? Let's say you're going to college and your whole goal is to play, play for college and you still haven't gotten a scholarship, but you're in your season, your season right? Trying to prepare you for that. So first thing you got to do is always start in a general uh, preparatory phase. And in this phase, what we're doing is basically preparing your body. We're not necessarily training soccer here, right? Again, it's preparing your body again to be able to produce max efforts and you know aerobic capacity when that time comes, right? Because you're not gonna go straight into 100 yard dashes tomorrow when you haven't even trained for the past six weeks or four weeks, whatever you do on your off time. Uh, so again, how do we prepare your, your, your body to you know get ready for future loads or future work, workloads that you're gonna be portraying in the strength phase, the hypertrophy phase, um, whatever it may be, right? So we wanna improve your effort, uh, effort and capacity during this time uh, because we're again preparing you for future uh, workload right so greater work capacity means more prepared your higher physical demands are going to be for that specific sport right so again take a look at your position how long you're far out of season and then start with the general preparatory phase but Jovan what is the general preparatory phase right that's kind of what you're getting at because I didn't explain it I think I've explained it in the previous video where this is kind of where you're going to be moving your body in different directions whether that's lateral or jumping up and down um, you're going to be doing body weight exercises something very simple you're not going hey i'm going to try to bench two plates right that's not going to do you any good at this time because again in soccer you don't need a bench two plates right you're not pushing people off the side unless you're a goalie unless you're a defender it, again it depends on your position but let's just stick to let's say a midfielder or a forward yes we are going to bench press my point is right now at the beginning of the phase you're not you're not needing to do that right now right so again we're preparing your body maybe you haven't worked out in a couple weeks maybe you haven't ran in three weeks how are you gonna go and bench two plates right your body's not ready unless you're a machine or you know very aesthetic and still work out or whatever it may be right so again you want to start for a couple weeks sometimes it takes months depending on what the time frame is a lot of times you want to the longer the better again because your body will be better prepared for when you move on to the strength phase or hypertrophy phase and we'll get that into into a little bit later but um, after you complete a, a let's say two weeks three weeks maybe four right of this general preparatory phase where you're doing push-ups sit-ups you're running um, whatever it may be you want to move into a sport specific phase and this is where you start incorporating things that the demands of the sport kind of require so this is where you can start introducing maybe 40 yard dashes right this is where you can do 100 yard dashes this is where you can do tempo runs that's where you run for five minutes sprint for 10 seconds and then run uh you know jog for another 30 seconds or whatever it be that's kind of how you're training your body to hey in soccer there's a lot of that right there's a lot of sprinting back up before the jogging waiting somebody gets injured you know you're recovering uh, so understanding a little bit of that not just you know i'm gonna go play and see whatever happens happens right understanding you know the movements the techniques you know how to slow down a game how to you know move with pace how to do all that stuff it all comes with mind and kind of playing it in your head before you even start touching the ball right so after you do your your you know sports specific training um then you kind of moved into a tactical setting and that is more where you are now i guess thinking about the game a little bit more into a tactical way of the game so for example let's say you're you know playing a seven aside game right or if, if your if your team is playing this is more for the coaching side this is where you'll do game like scenarios of you know short short long right because that's where you're doing a couple touches here hitting on the other side of the field and having them go defend that side right so that's what happens in the games you can throw free kicks in there you can throw all this stuff while they're playing against because it gets them out of their mind of like it's not always going to be my way or this is not always going to you know play into the whistle there's going to be fouls there's going to be out of bounds there's going to be you know tackles there's going to be all that stuff when you put those into training you're well suited or more prepared for you know when you do step on that pitch right ready to compete and you're ready you're you're aware you, you kind of plan out what's going to happen because you can from a soccer player that's been playing in a while you can kind of tell when there's a foul coming right you can tell whether the intensity is high whether you know those two been you know battling at it for, for a couple minutes now maybe somebody tackled them a little bit hard and now somebody wants to go when you play a long time you kind of pick those you know cues up where i'm gonna go and try and get this guy right because he hurt my friend or he nicked me here or whatever it may be not saying that the game is going to be that way all the time, but you can kind of tell um, a little bit how that game might play out. And when you have those scenarios in your head, you're kind of better suited for that 
you know, that worst scenario or something that might play in your favor so you can score a goal or get on a counter or whatever it may be. So just kind of being vigilant and kind of being aware of your, your situation, your surrounding in the game is important. So kind of vigilant that in practice or having, you know, those scenarios in practice is going to help you for the game itself, okay? Um, so again, when you're in this phase, you're starting to not only prepare your body, but your tactical i guess between the tactical and the sport specific is where you want to start working on soccer specific skills right so we started the first couple months or first couple weeks of just basic generic exercise and then we moved into more of a specific you know what does the sport require now you start doing your tactical movements i know there's a lot of videos out there of people and even i've done it before with my athletes where we're running through a lot of drills on the ball because again, you want to master the skills on the ball before you know you start playing as well. Uh, but this is where you start running those drills a little bit and getting your body ready for those games, right? So um, the other thing I do wanted to mention, so let's say you are a year out, right? Let's say you're in college or let's say you're in high school and your season just ended in the winter and you have a whole year again or basically like eight or nine months before you start playing again. Ideally, this is what I recommend for all my athletes that play soccer if they have that much time is you want to start with your general preparatory phase that I just talked about, the basic phase to prepare your body. You go to sports specific for, for about a month or so, and then you start your hypertrophy phase. And that is for probably another month or so, um, where you're now doing high rep volume, trying to increase muscle size. And I'll tell you why that's important for soccer players. And we're not bodybuilding, so don't think about it that way. So that's just a shoot out of the window. And then you'll go to max strength. After max strength, you want to work on power and speed, okay? And then from there, you're basically maintaining during your season or about to peak for your season. And that's a whole nother conversation that we can make a separate video about. But the reason we like doing hypertrophy phase right after your sport specific or, hey, now you're ready to start training or actually weightlifting and stuff like that. We start with the hypertrophy phase, right? And the reason we do that is because we want you to gain muscle size as much as you can during the off season, not necessarily during the season. Because when you switch over to max strength, when you're working to see how strong you can get before season, you're not gonna just you know go from playing in the field for you know two months or training in the field or doing soccer drills, which is cute, right? Which is fun. Um, to hey, I'm gonna go try to bench two plates, right? For whatever many reps, right? I'm gonna go try to deadlift three plates, deadlift two plates. You're gonna hurt yourself. You're not ready for that, right? So we work on the hypertrophy phase to build muscle size and muscle fibers um, because when you start going for strength, your muscles need to be able to recruit as much muscle fibers. And through the thin filament, I don't know if you guys understand muscle cells and biology and you know how muscles work, but the more muscle fibers they can recruit within a certain you know muscle group, for example, your glutes or your hamstrings or your quads, the bigger they are, when you're going, you know, constantly overload on the let's say a, a squat, then before you didn't have that extra muscles or extra muscle cells within the muscle fiber to be able to produce that much you know, I wouldn't say energy, but strength and force to put that weight upright, right? So kind of give you the idea of why we do that. That's the whole reason of hypertrophy for your body to be able to prepare for max strength, which is the next phase after. And you can't, you can't um, reach speed or top speed or plyometrics, how powerful you can be off the line or how high you can jump without being strong, right? So you kind of have an understanding of why we do things this way. So hypertrophy, gain muscle size. So when you're ready to do max strength, you have those muscle cells, again, in the muscle fibers to recruit as much as they can while producing force under the bar or whatever it may be. Um, and then from there, actually, when you feel strong or have completed this, the strength phase, max strength phase, you go into power. That's where your plyometrics come in, whether that's jumping, you know, jump squats, whether that's, you know, lateral death, uh, death jumps, whether that's, you know, plyometric boxes where you jump up and down, right? That's where that comes in. It comes in at the very end. It doesn't come in initially. And I've seen a lot of athletes and myself in my younger days go straight to, hey, I want to be able to be quick on my feet. And they start doing these ladder drills. They start doing, you know, box jumps and all this stuff and these drills on the field. Hey, that's not going to do you any good if you're not strong first. So there is a reason why we do, you know, this method is because that is the best way that's proven to show that we can prepare you for season and be, be able to have you at your top speed at the right time and how to peak at a certain time to be able to perform, especially if you're in high school and want to get a college, you know, college scholarship, or if you're in your college years today and ready to make that next jump, or I want to go on trials, I want to go try out, 
hey, you're not just gonna stick to your old methods that maybe weren't the best or weren't really aware, didn't really hire a coach. I recommend, hey, if you have those questions, reach out to me. I'm very well versed in this field. I played it all my life. I got to a level, you know, pretty high. And I've been able, I've been fortunate to coach a lot of kids and, and, and young athletes and basically prepare them for whatever their, you know, future endeavors are. So again, if you have questions in regards to soccer training, what can I do? What can I work on? You know, we're going to first talk about what you're currently doing today, how much you're playing, how much time you're spending off, on and off the field. And, you know, sometimes diet, it really depends on, on your situation. But hey, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to help anybody out. Um, whether that's sending me a message or giving me a comment on the video. I really appreciate, appreciate you guys all watching this video and, and share it with anybody that you think would be be, uh, benefit this too. So if you have any soccer players today, if you have any soccer players in your family, friends, if you're a former soccer player, if, if you're my friend, you know, shout out to you. Um, I know it's been a long time since I've been away from friends, but um, again, if you play soccer, planning on playing soccer in college, high school, whatever it may be, start with the strength training program if you have any questions where to start reach out to me i'm your boy until then take care peace and wash your hands peace.